Canyonlands National Park is Utah's largest national park with over 330,000 acres. The park consists of three unique districts with the Island in the Sky area getting the most visitors. This area sits a thousand feet above the valley below it and looks down on canyons that have been carved by the Colorado and Green Rivers. The park is a geological wonder and one that must be experienced. Here's all the information on how we spent one day in Canyonlands Island in the Sky District. We started our day in Canyonlands National Park by leaving Moab about an hour and a half before sunrise. Entering Canyonlands National Park at 5.30 in the morning with 28 degree weather. It's gonna be fun. Starting the trail to Mesa Arch for sunrise. There's like six cars in the parking lot right now. There's snow on the ground. <laughs> nice chilly morning. This is definitely not for everybody, but it's one of the most iconic places in the Southwest, so it's pretty cool to see it at sunrise. The Mesa Arch Trail is about three quarters of a mile round trip, and be sure to bring a headlamp or a flashlight as you're gonna be hiking this in the dark. Eventually you'll see the arch come into view and most likely there'll be other photographers already there waiting. What's crazy about this spot is that it can only really accommodate 10 to 15 photographers and since it's so popular there's always a lot of people waiting for sunrise here. Sunrise at Mesa Arch. Be sure to get there as early as you possibly can if you want to get a specific spot but I was there about 30 minutes early and I was able to get a great spot for photos. Even if you're not taking pictures, this is an amazing place to experience for yourself. Watching the sun come up and light up the landscape in front of you as well as illuminating the arch is one of those sunrises that you'll never forget in your entire life. That's often called one of the most iconic spots in the Southwest. Absolutely incredible for sunrise photography. Get here early, there's only about a spot for 10 or so photographers, but if you do it, it's incredible. After just hanging out and watching the light come up a little bit more, we decided to leave Mesa Arch for our full day in Canyonlands National Park. As a non-photographer, was it worth getting up for? It's just gorgeous, and the way that the colors change underneath the arch, it's things you wouldn't necessarily anticipate, but it's fun to see that change. So that's a yes? Yeah, absolutely. The three areas of Canyonlands consist of the Needles, the Maze, and the Island in the Sky District. In this video, we're only in the Island in the Sky District. We're driving around the park now, gonna do a couple overlooks, a couple hikes before heading out of the park. Canyonlands Island in the Sky District is basically a mesa that looks down over the surrounding landscape. Most of the park's major attractions are going to overlooks along the mesa and then walking along the rim to take in the scenery. This video will never do justice to these places as it's something you have to experience for yourself. It's nuts being here in winter. It's freezing cold, but there's no people around. It's basically silent when you're out in those viewpoints. It's pretty surreal. Miraculously, this banana is somehow still on the roof after we drove 50 miles from the hotel. This is like a super banana right here. I'm glad I didn't litter and that the banana was still on the roof. <laughs> Next up, we're taking the trail out to the White Rim Overlook. There was only like three or four parking spots here, but there's some picnic areas. The two most popular trails to walk along the rim are the White Rim Overlook Trail and the Grandview Point Trail. I'd done Grandview on a previous trip, so I decided to do the White Rim Overlook Trail. It's about two miles round trip and there's not much of a view on the way out there, but once you make it out, the views are incredible. This trail really doesn't have any signs, so you're following the rocks again. We're about three quarters of a mile in and we're starting to get our first view. I think the point is right out there. Get you with those layers of mountains behind you. When you reach the overlook, it basically feels like you're looking down on the crazy canyons that go across the landscape. 
Again, it's hard to capture how majestic this is with my camera, but it is so cool to see. Here's the end of the trail. Can't really go out there. Don't think you can see it, but the arch we were shooting at was looking at these mountains over here. So it must be like over there when we were shooting sun sunrise. My dad and I spent a good 20 minutes just sitting out here taking in all of the views before starting the walk back to the car. I have to say, this is a pretty incredible viewpoint. Definitely worth the walk, especially for that area with those crazy white top rocks. All right, on to the next viewpoint. I feel like Canyonlands is one of those places you really can't understand until you experience it yourself. Even when you're here, it almost looks fake when you're looking down into the canyons. It's definitely worth coming to see it though. This is the Orange Cliffs overview, which is right before Grandview. I'm sure you know if you watch my National Park videos, I like to show you every viewpoint so you know what you're going to get. We've made it to the end of the road, which is Grand View Point. You can see there's not very many parking spots here, so definitely know that if you're coming in the summer. Grandview Point is the end of the road heading in the southern direction, and it is a popular spot due to it having a hiking trail and amazing views. The parking lot can easily fill here, especially in the summer, and while most people are only taking in the views, some people do go on the hike, so you'll have to wait a little bit longer to get a spot. The view here looks out over the epic expanse of Canyonlands National Park heading towards the Needles area. If you could fly as a bird, it's not that far to get to the Needles area, but if you're going to drive, it's a good three hours. That little spire there is the totem pole, which is the tallest feature in the basin at 305 feet. Way down there. You can just enjoy the view, or you can actually walk out to the point right there, which is Grandview Point. It's about a mile. We're not going to do it on this trip, but I'm sure it's a great view out there. Definitely plan some time for Grandview Point, as it's one of those places where you're just going to want to sit and look out for a while. As I'm leaving, I did see that there's another 8 or 10 spots, so double what I thought, but still not a lot of parking for the summer. On the way back, there's just a random pullout that led to this amazing view, so I figured I had to go check it out. This is what I love about Canyonlands is that the entire drive is an amazing view, not just the pullouts. On the way back, we took the other road in the park, which heads west to a couple other hikes and viewpoints. Our next overlook is the Green River Overlook. The Green River Overlook looks out over a different area than what we've been seeing in this video so far. From here you can see all the way out to the Green River which feeds into the Colorado River when it crosses the Grand View Point area. I have to say it's one of my favorite viewpoints in the park because it's so unique. It's crazy that it just doesn't look real, like this area down here doesn't look real, that doesn't look real. We're at an island in the sky is actually the junction of the Green River and the Colorado River. We were looking at the Colorado River on the other side, I believe, and so this is the Green River we're looking at now. After spending a few more minutes at the Green River Overlook, it was time to head on and to do some hiking. This is the Aztec Butte hike. You can actually go all the way out to the Aztec Butte, but we are going to just go to the granaries, which are pictured right here. They're from the ancient Puebloan people, and they were built hundreds of years ago, and they're stuck in the rock down there still, so we wanted to go check those out. If you want to go all the way out to Aztec Butte, it's a mile and three quarters round trip, but we just went to the granaries, which was about three quarters of a mile round trip. Basically, in Canyonlands and in Arches, you got to follow the Cairns in order to figure out where the trail is. This trail is definitely a little hard to follow, so I'd recommend having an all-trails map. That's Aztec View right there, which you can climb if you want to to get a view over the park. We're about a quarter mile from the parking area, and here is the split to the granary. 
There's one little steep section right here to go up to the granaries. When we made it to the top of this platform, we actually struggled to figure out where the granaries were. We walked around for a while and then saw a couple people that were at the bottom of the hill who pointed us in the right direction. In order to get to the granaries, you actually have to go down off the side of this little cliff right here and then they're in the alcove right there. It was a little sketchy doing this with the snow and my dad actually stayed at the top. But once you come down to this section, you can walk across the slick rock and you'll see them. So these are literally built into the side of the hill, way up here on the top of this mountain. So cool. This must have been good for hiding them and maybe even for keeping them cool because Pops is right out on the trail above it and you would never even know that these things were down there. This hike was definitely a highlight for me and not something I expected when I came to Canyonlands. Only one hike left today, Pops. Good! Woo! That hike is definitely worth doing if you're into the area's history. It was a little bit sketchy at the end, but it's an incredible payoff. One more hike left in Canyonlands. We're saying one hike left because this is our fifth national park in five days and we were pretty tired of hiking. Upheaval Dome, we start here, and then there's the first overlook and the second overlook. I think we're just gonna do this one today, but that's what it looks like from above, which is pretty incredible. The Upheaval Dome Trail is about a mile and a half round trip to make it to both of the viewpoints. I highly recommend going to both, and that's what we ended up doing in this video, as it's cool to be able to see it from both views. The beginning of the trail is uphill the entire way, but it's relatively gradual on stone steps, so it's not too difficult. We're still heading up. There's a little bit of slick rock, but I think we're almost to the first overlook. Here's the first overlook right here. Upheaval Dome is this massive canyon on the west side of the park, and people are not even sure how it was created. The current thought is that it was created by a meteorite that collided with the Earth. Looking at the area through this lens, it's pretty incredible to think about a meteorite impact creating this valley that you see below you. Heading on to the second overlook. I thought the first overlook was going to be tougher, but it was one steep section and it was relatively short. So that's why I figured might as well go on to the second one. The trail to the second viewpoint takes you along the ridge line and around Upheaval Dome. It's relatively short, but it definitely has some ups and downs. We're going along these steps, and then that's the second overlook right there. Along the way, you get lots of other views of Upheaval Dome. This last section is pretty steep, so Pops opted to stay back there. That's the overlook right there. The last section up to the top is more of a scramble than it is a trail. Second overlook, end of the trail. There's the first one, way over there. I think this one's gonna be pretty incredible though. If you feel up for it on your hike, I definitely recommend going to the second viewpoint. The first is nice, but the second is definitely more impressive as you get a better view of Upheaval Dome. Made it to the second overlook. I have to say it is better than the first. It's definitely worth coming up here. You can also get some views of the western area of Canyonlands, which is nice too. See if you can spot Pops in this video. Hiking down the steep section, gonna do the visitor center and a few more viewpoints before ending our time in Island in the Sky District of Canyonlands National Park. After leaving Upheaval Dome, we made our way back to the center of the park to see a few more viewpoints that we missed in the dark and the visitor center. The first stop was at Schaefer Trail Viewpoint. There it is, the famous Schaefer Trail, which you can drive all the way down to the bottom of if you want. But don't take that lightly. It's like a one lane dirt road. It looks like it even got some snow right now. There's a hiking trail here to the next spring, which is six miles. And then the Schaefer Canyon Viewpoint is a 10th of a mile. I honestly think that's the best viewpoint though. That's the most iconic looking down on it like that. The last viewpoint we saw of Schaefer Trail was just a random pullout, so this was the official viewpoint. 
That's a cool view of the trail as well. You can see how steep the descent is. But yeah, the other view is definitely better. I wouldn't do this with snow on the trail, but I'd love to come back and do it in the summer. Our last stop of the day was Island in the Sky Visitor Center. Here you could learn more about the park and its diverse landscape or pick up a souvenir. Three distinct districts, the Island in the Sky, and then the Needles, and then the Maze. That completes our one day in the Island in the Sky district of Canyonlands. Be sure to click the link to see our video in the Needles district and follow for more.